Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 229 days, Ukraine stands strong against the Russian invasion. Yesterday, Russia conducted a series of massive missile and drone attacks against Ukrainian cities in 12 regions, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the Interior Minister of Ukraine, Denis Monastyrsky, at least 14 people were killed and another 97 were injured. Russian attacks were aimed, among other targets, against the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. At the same time, a large part of the missiles hit civilian areas. In Kyiv, it hit a crossroad during the rush hour, a footbridge and children's playground. According to the general staff, in one day Russia launched 84 cruise missiles and 24 drones over the territory of Ukraine. Ukrainian troops shot down more than half of the missiles, 43 and 13 unmanned aerial vehicles. Due to the massive rocket attack, facilities in more than 30 cities and towns were damaged. The list of affected cities includes Kyiv, Lviv, Rivne, Zhytomyr, Ternopil, Khmelnytsky, Ivano-Frankivsk, Vinnytsia, Priluky, Nizhen, Konotop, Kharkiv, Kremenchuk, Dnipro, Krivy Rih, Zaporizhia, Mykolaiv, Odessa and others. The Interior Minister said that this is the second time since February 24 that there has been such a large-scale attack and from the point of view of critical energy infrastructure this is probably the largest shelling in modern history. The strikes left many Ukrainian cities without electricity and water. Ukrainian officials asked citizens to limit energy consumption for the upcoming days from 5 to 10 p.m., reports Ekonomichna Pravda. According to them, it will help to pass the critical loads of power grids. Prime Minister Denis Megal announced the possibility of temporary electricity cutoffs in four regions of Ukraine and the capital. Shmigal informed that dozens of rockets hit energy infrastructure facilities in 11 regions and the city of Kyiv. Electricity supply was disrupted almost throughout the country. There are problems with water supply in eight regions. He emphasized that according to preliminary information, most of the energy infrastructure facilities can be restored in several hours, some will start working on October 11th. The energy ministry announced that Ukraine will stop exporting electricity from October 11th to stabilize its own energy system, reports Interfax Ukraine. After the start of the attack, Russian President Vladimir Putin released a video message in which he claimed that Russia had struck military facilities and energy infrastructure of Ukraine with high-precision, long-range weapons, reports BBC News Ukraine. He said that strikes were a response for Ukraine's terrorist attacks on the territory of Russia. He claimed that Ukraine shelled Zaporizhia nuclear power plant on the occupied territory and carried out three acts of terrorism against the Kursk nuclear power plant in Russia. According to Putin, Ukraine also tried to blow up the Turkish stream gas pipeline that goes on the bottom of the Black Sea. The Russian president warned that if Ukraine continues attempts to carry out terrorist attacks on the territory of Russia, the responses will be tough and correspond to the level of threats. Last Saturday, a massive explosion took place on the bridge that connects annexed in 2014 Crimea and Russia. The bridge is the symbol of this annexation both for Russians and Ukrainians. Ukrainian intelligence believes that with this massive attack, the newly appointed commander of the Russian forces in Ukraine, Sergei Surovikin, is trying to demonstrate quick results to Vladimir Putin, reports Ukrainform. The intelligence points out that this is exactly his style to throw rockets at the infrastructure, including civilian objects. The mass shelling of Ukraine on October 10 cost the Russians about 4 to 700 million dollars, reports Forbes Ukraine. According to the media, the difference in numbers is explained because it is not known how many missiles of which type were used. In his evening video address, filmed at the site of one of the attacks in Kyiv, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said that the restoration work is currently underway across the country. He assured that all objects that were damaged in this attack by Russian terrorists will be restored, it's only a matter of time. The president said that the leaders of the terrorists say that they hit all the targets they planned, but it's a lie. Also, according to him, they lie about the real targets. Zelensky pointed out that he was standing on the crossroad in the historical center of Kyiv, near the park with the playground, university and several museums. The president stressed that Ukraine saw various strangers and survived them all. Quote, Ukraine cannot be intimidated, we united even more instead. Ukraine cannot be stopped, we are convinced even more that terrorists must be neutralized. Unquote. 
Yesterday evening, Volodymyr Zelensky held a phone call with the U.S. President Joe Biden. According to the White House, Biden promised to provide Ukraine with advanced air defense systems, reports European Pravda. He condemned Russian missile strikes against Ukraine and expressed his condolences to the relatives and friends of those killed and injured. The U.S. President also emphasized his continued engagement with allies and partners to continue imposing sanctions on Russia, hold Russia accountable for its war crimes and atrocities, and provide security, economic and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Earlier, the media reported that Ukraine has changed the list of priority weapons to receive from the United States as winter approaches. Now the top priority is air defense systems, as Russia is likely to intensify missile attacks on infrastructure. After the attacks, German Defense Minister Christine Lambrecht said that Berlin plans to hand over the first Iris T air defense system to Ukraine in the next few days, reports Defense UA. She said that the renewal of missile strikes on Kyiv and many other cities underscores how important it is to quickly provide Ukraine with air defense. According to the minister, the other three systems from the previously promised package of four will be provided to Ukraine next year. After the start of the attacks yesterday morning, the Serhii Pritula Foundation, together with known activist and blogger Sergei Sternenko, opened a fundraiser to collect money for Ukrainian kamikaze drones Ram-2, reports Espresso TV. They said that this is a way to get revenge for the attacks. In just the first four hours of the campaign, they collected 100 million grivna and by the end of the day over 206 million, which is 5.59 million US dollars. If you like what we do and would like to tip us, you can now do so directly to our PayPal. Check out the link in the description to this episode for more details. And as usual, you can subscribe to our Patreon. In gratitude for your help, we will give you access to a series of exclusive episodes on wartime life in Ukraine. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.